stopped by the TV5 studios and we sat down with her for a one-on-one -on -one interview about issues impacting you at home. Have you been in talks with both the UAW and the big three automakers? What is your administration doing? Yeah, I'm talking regularly. Obviously, the state of Michigan is not a party at the table, but we've got a huge vested interest in them coming, bringing this to a conclusion. You know, I've been talking regularly with the leadership of the big three as well as the UAW, trying to encourage them to all stay at the table and negotiate this and get it done. Would you walk the picket line with union workers? You know, I stopped by a picket line and brought some food at one point. Um, obviously, I think, you know, there is a balance that needs to be struck here. We need a win-win. It's not like any negotiation. There's got to be um, an effort on both sides to come to a conclusion and, and benefit everyone here. And I think we can. We've seen that happen in the past. It is absolutely essential going forward, and I'm hopeful that they can get this done soon. Is Michigan prepared to weather a storm if this does drag on for a long time? Well, I hope it doesn't, and I think the prospect of a prolonged um, strike is something that should concern every person. Well, it looks as though it could be a historic contract for the UAW, um, I'd love to see that happen and get it get it completed and get people back to work. I want to talk about child care because you've talked a lot about child care, and now we see that uh, across the country with ARPA funds running out, that we could see um, closures and parents could actually be making some tough choices. Yeah, well, we know that with these federal dollars coming to a close, that um, it's going to put pressure on a lot of uh, child care places. We have put a lot of resources into early childhood, um, whether it's Great Start Readiness Program and making pre-K universal, that's the goal, and we're making great strides on that front. We created something called the TriShare Program where the state picks up a third of the cost of childcare, the parent does and the employer does. We're doing that in a lot of parts in the state. That's something we want to continue to expand on because we know that childcare is a real barrier for a lot of people getting into the workforce. In your words, the dam roads are being fixed. What about bridges, water pipes, the rest of our infrastructure? We've made a lot of strides on all the fronts. We haven't solved every problem yet, uh, but we have made, you know, it's undeniable as you're driving across Michigan that there is a lot of work being done. The bridge bundling program that we created, $200 million, we've been able to knock off a lot of bridges off the list of bridges that need to get repaired. I know in every part of the state that there is a list and we're continuing to work with locals to make sure that um, where the state owns a bridge or the local does it, we're working together and we're getting the best um, value for taxpayers in, in this bridge bundling program. So. The um, lane miles that we fixed, the, the bridges, the water infrastructure underneath the ground, all of these are part of the infrastructure that we are focused on and that thanks to the Infra Infrastructure Act that President Biden um, signed into law, there are more resources coming. And money from the infrastructure bill has been used for road repairs across mid-Michigan, including the Lafayette Bridge Project in Bay City.